Watch you guys, got another video here for you. Now, if you want to fix Windows 10 that won't boot after you've tried to do a Windows update, then this video is for you. So you can see here, you may get into this uh, boot loop where it's trying to load up and it will self-diagnose the system and it will keep shutting down or it will freeze or you'll get a black screen or something like that on there. And this, this is sometimes happens when you try to do a major big Windows update and something goes wrong, it doesn't like it, maybe a driver issue or something like that. And I'll show you the best steps to take if this does happen to you, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, let this uh, try and boot up here. And you may get this window where it will freeze on the update. You may get a black screen or something like that. And you may also get to the login screen and it will then uh, uh, shut down. So another thing, make sure when it's updating is to give it plenty of time to update and install those updates. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, okay, for new videos when we upload them. So what we're going to do first is back up our data before we try to fix the issue. And I'll show you some of the options you've got after we've backed up the data. Now, we're going to be using Acronis True Image here. Now, this is a bootable media which you can create, and I've made videos to show you how to do this. Basically, you can boot to this and you can choose whatever backup media you like to back up your data. And uh, once you've got this uh, booted up to, you can change your boot order to boot to this USB flash drive or CD. I'm going to choose a Cronus True Image 2016 uh, 64-bit. And what that's going to do is allow us to back up all our precious data before we start messing with it. Because I've seen people try to update with Windows, it's failed, and uh, they end up losing all their data and you don't want to do that okay so here we have uh, the bootable media and uh, what we're going to do is click on backup and you can choose to back up my data or your whole disk drive or partition backup it's entirely up to you so if you've got a load of space you want to make sure that you've got an external drive plugged into your computer at this stage and then you can uh, back up to that device okay so we'll do uh, my data backup here now you don't have to do Windows and all that sort of stuff if you don't want to. You can just go to Users and then you can select the user account of the data that you want to back up. And this is also another quick uh, way to get just data off. So if you're not interested about the whole drive and backing up the whole drive, Windows and all that stuff, then this is what you can do. But if you do want to do that, then you obviously want to choose the other option and back up the whole computer. So you can see here we have a Brightech user account and uh, we're going to go next here and we're going to back up just that user profile and that is going to have all our data like our documents photos and stuff like that and you can see here now it gives us options to back up to certain locations you can see uh, your NAS drive there if you've got one external drives uh, whatever it is flash drive you've got loads of different options where you can back up to so this is really important um, if you want to back up to an external drive you can just click on here and click removable drive and you can see here this is my removable drive here now depending on the size of your drive if you've got a, another drive on your system uh, so you've got two separate drives you can actually back up to that one because it doesn't have windows on it so there's another option uh, for you right there so i'm going to click on and uh, you can see i've only got one drive on this system so we're going to back up uh, to the removable drive. So let's go over to the generate a name and it will give it a name called my backup. And uh, that will be OK for me. So that's OK. And there, now we can change there, you can change. But I'm just going to proceed here and let this copy this uh, content across. Now, depending on how much data you do have, whether it be masses of gigabytes of photos and music and stuff like that, will depend on how much time it will take. So be patient and let it do its thing. It's important uh, that you always back up your data before you do any work on the computer. And that should be the case for any type of issue that you're having. Just in case something goes wrong, you'll always have a backup of that data, okay? And you can always restore using this method as well. So we'll just let this uh, run through the process. Now you can shut down the computer once this is completed, which means you can walk away. And you can also see restart the computer uh, once the operation is completed. Now I'm going to do a restart because I want to show you some options that you can do to try and fix uh, the Windows update issue if you can't boot into Wix 
uh, the Windows update issue if you can't boot into Windows. So let this uh, finish off. It's going to reboot now. And it will go into an automatic uh, repair because obviously every time you try to boot the system up, after three times it will let you get into the uh, advanced options area where you can start to do repairs. And it will try to do this. And this is a, a really great feature for Windows 10, which means after three attempts, it will automatically uh, go into that option. Now, if you don't get that option, then I'll show you another way uh, of getting into there, okay? So as Windows loads up, it will get to the please wait and it will get to your login screen and then it may freeze or restart but if it hold if it gets stuck here you can see a little icon here with the uh, ethernet icon or network icon click on that and it will give you the other option of power click on the power button and hold the shift key down and then click restart continually hold that shift key down while you're restarting and that will take you straight into the choose an option area where you can go into troubleshoot if you don't get this, obviously uh, the free reboot uh, sequence will take you to this location anyway. Once you're here, go into advanced options and it will give you a bunch of options which you can then try to uh, use to fix or uh, resolve your issue with your Windows update. Now the first one uh, is System Restore. Now not everyone has System, Re system Restore enabled. By default, uh, System Restore is disabled in Windows 10, so you may need to uh, enable that for a future reference. But if you want to try and do this, if you have got System Restore points, you can log into the account and go back to a time before that Windows update and uh, make sure you select a time uh, and then go back. OK, so if it updated yesterday, then go back a day or two days before that. Now, as you can see here, System Restore files and settings has not been uh, set up so you can't use that which is very common now you do have a system image recovery there as well now this is basically like a Cronus it's going to have an image file that you've backed up at some point and if you haven't backed your computer up then you can't use that method okay so system image is a Windows backup uh, which you can back up and recover from so you can use that option if you do have uh, a Windows recovery option set up. Start up repair may be able to fix it. Always try and do that. So go into start up repair, click that, and it will try and do that diagnostic and repair. But if you have tried already three times and it keeps rebooting, then that is not going to work for you because obviously that's what it's trying to do diagnose and repair that issue. Now we're going to try and keep this simple, uh, but you also have other options available to you which are. Uh, startup settings now this is to try and get into safe mode and I would always try to get into safe mode just to make sure and uh, just click on that and click restart and what that's going to do is allow you to choose uh, enable safe mode so you just push number four on your keyboard and it will reboot and it will go into safe mode now obviously if it doesn't boot into safe mode then you've got other issues and you need to go back to the troubleshoot area. But we'll try to boot into mode here and be patient, let it boot up. And if it gets into safe mode, as you can see here, and we'll see black screen. And there you go, it's starting to load. And we are now booting into safe mode. Now, once you're inside here, there's a load of other options. You could back up your data from here if you haven't got a Cronus or any sort of backup. So you can still get an option to back up your data from this location. Just plug. And also while you're in safe mode, you can run some other checks as well. If you can get to safe mode, that is. So you can go to control panel and then uh, once control panels open, you can go to where it says program and features. Click on that and then go up to the top left hand side where it says view installed updates and you will see all the updates here now if you do see the update that's just been installed you can click uninstall and remove that and hopefully that will allow you to uh, boot to uh, your desktop so you can try that also you can run some other things from here like sfc scan now and things like that if you want to to try and resolve that issue uh, with uh, the windows files 
uh, if that's what you wanted to do from there but you can also do it from that troubleshoot area as well uh, by going into command prompt from there if you can't do save mode so you could run that from there as well so let's go back into the into the troubleshoot area and let me just show you some other things that you can try uh, before uh, you wipe the system and give up so let's restart and go back into the troubleshoot area okay so we're back into the troubleshoot area here and uh, the other option you've got here is go back to a previous version now when Windows tries to update or it does update it always gives you a backup to roll back to which is go back to a previous version and this is what you can use okay and it can roll the system back to a previous version if that fails the only other option you're going to have is reset your PC and uh, you can see here it says keep my files or remove everything now there is more advanced ways of removing updates via the command prompt but I'm going to leave that out of this video because I think that's too advanced for some people but this is another option which is keep my files and uh, it will remove all your apps so any programs you've got in there it will remove those from the system okay but it will keep your personal data remove everything will wipe the system clean and put a fresh install of windows on it so just bear that in mind if you choose to keep my files uh, it will wipe your applications and just put windows on so you'll lose all that and you'll have to reinstall all your programs so i've tried to keep this simple and uh, show you the simple methods rather than the more complex ones uh, but this is basically a real simple method of backing up your data and then try to resolve the issue with some of the methods I showed you. And if they don't work, then you can always reinstall Windows. Now, the reason why this happens is because probably uh, there's something on your system that the new update doesn't like, i.e. a driver or something like that, and it's corrupted the update, and now you're having these issues. So if you follow those steps, you should be able to uh, resolve your issue uh, or at least you'll have all your data backed up without losing all of that data. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this one up. I hope you enjoyed it. My name is Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Thanks again for watching, guys, and thanks for your continued support. Have a great weekend. Bye for now. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the big red subscribe button on my YouTube channel and hit the bell notification button next to that to be notified when we upload new videos.